Okay. The lecture is on soil science and ecology. And uh, earlier we have discussed, we have discussed uh, the physical and chemical properties of soil earlier. So we'll just quickly do a brief revision and then we'll continue with what we have to discuss today. Our lecture today is on detritus and we'll also discuss uh, classification of soils. So just a quick uh, revision of what we have done so far in physical and chemical nature of soil. We had discussed earlier about the physical and chemical properties of soil. And the physical properties of soil that we discussed are horizontation, texture, soil structure, bulk density, porosity, consistency, temperature, color, and resistivity. Those are the physical properties of soil that we discussed. And then we also looked at the chemical properties of soil uh, last week. And we said the chemical properties of soil include cation exchange capacity, anion exchange capacity, soil reaction, which is uh, pH. Then we also uh, looked at soil buffering capacity in the previous lecture. And in that lecture, we mentioned that cation exchange capacity is a measure of the negative charge per unit weight of soil. That's basically what we how cation, one of the definitions of cation exchange capacity. And just as it is in the screen now, you can see that we have this. Uh, these are the chemical properties of soil. Uh, cation exchange capacity, anion exchange capacity, soil reaction, which is pH, uh, base saturation percentage, and uh, soil buffering capacity. All right, so uh, at cation exchange capacity, like I've said before, is a measure of the magnitude of the negative charge per unit weight of soil. A measure of the magnitude of the negative charge per unit weight of soil that uh, each soil, uh, particularly clay soils, are known to have high cation exchange capacity. That cations are positively charged ions. And, uh, you know, positive charges are always attracted to positive, other positive, uh, to negative charges. So the soil has a negative charge. Usually clay soils, they have negative charges. And that's basically what enables them to retain cations and sequester them for air change. Sequester means to save, to save them or to store them for uh, air change. All right, so we also defined cation exchange capacity as the amount of cations a particular soil can hold in an exchangeable form. Then apart from cation exchange capacity, we also looked at soil pH, soil pH. Uh, pH basically means the, uh, uh, the level of acidity or alkalinity of the soil, whether the soil is acidic or whether it is uh, alkaline. Alkaline means whether uh, it is basic. The soil is said to be alkaline uh, when it is basic. So uh, I said that uh, the pH of a soil are determined by the ions, the ions that are present, the hydrogen ions that are present in the soil. The hydrogen ions that are present in the soil determines the pH of a soil, whether it will be acidic or whether it will be, uh, whether 
it will be alkaline. All right, so in that, we defined soil pH or soil reactivity as a measure of the active hydrogen ion concentrations in the soil. A measure of the active hydrogen ion concentration in the soil. Then we looked at other aspects, soil buffering capacity, the ability of the soil to uh, to alter, uh, to manage changes in pH. All right, so that's uh, those are the things we discussed. So today we are going to discuss detritus. Our subject today is detritus, and what is detritus? Basically, the word detritus referred to particulate organic matter. And the word detritus basically refers to non-living particulate organic material. That's what detritus basically means, non-living particulate organic material. That's organic matter that have, uh, that are undergoing decomposition. The word detritus referred to non living particulate organic material. Take for instance, uh, dead animals, dead animals, the carcasses of animals. It could be a bird, it could be an ant, it could be an antelope, it could be an earthworm or any other animal that have died and is undergoing decomposition is referred to as detritus. It could also mean leaf litter, refer to leaf litter. Leaf litter, that's the leaf that are falling from uh, plants. And even the plants themselves that have died, that are undergoing decomposition, are referred to as detritus. The plants that have died and that are undergoing decomposition are also referred to as detritus. So, Basically, they are uh, the detritus the, 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 the are decomposing dead organisms. You can put it that way: decomposing dead organisms, organisms that have died and that are undergoing decomposition. In in the soil, you can encounter them as leaf litter or as humus. They usually the detritus is also mixed with uh, the detritus. It's also mixed with uh, the soil to form humus. In the aquatic ecosystem, the detritus uh, uh, are mixed with the, the mixed with the water to form organic uh, substances that sometimes settle at the bottom of the water body. Okay, such. Uh, uh, Decomposing organic matter are referred to as detritus. And basically, um, microorganisms are responsible for the breakdown of these detritus. Microorganisms like the bacteria and fungi are responsible for the breakdown of these detritus. And the detritus are very important in the uh, ecosystem. They are very important in the ecosystem because they form a very important source of nutrients. The, uh, the detritus serve as a very important source of nutrients to living organisms. They serve as a very important source of nutrients to living organisms. So uh, we want to look at the the importance of detritus. Much of the detritus that uh, are found either in the soil or in the water, they serve as a very important source of nutrition to animals. In particular, benthic organisms feed on these detritus. And even in this uh, in terrestrial ecosystem, the earthworms, the earthworms and even other detritivores like the 
the termites feed on this detritus and obtain uh, obtain nutrients from these detritus. Here are some organisms. Uh, uh, here is uh, a picture. Here are pictures of some organisms that uh, depend on detritus, particularly in the aquatic ecosystem. I have some pictures to present here. I have pictures of benthic organisms like this uh, Goniopsus pelli, which is a mangrove crab, feeds on the decomposing mangrove leaves and roots. They feed on this decomposing mangrove leaves and roots in the soil. This other benthic organism like Uka tangeri, which is Uka tangeri, also feed on the decomposing parts of animals and plants that are in, in the soil, in the benthic region, in the bottom of the river. Then this uh, Pachygraphus species, this is also another benthic organism, uh, Calinectis amnicola, which also feeds on decomposing organic matter. Then the barnacles, if you look at this crab, you see barnacles on its shell. The barnacles are filter feeders. They filter detritus, organic matter, from the water and feed on them. And also this uh, uh, crustacean, Alpheus contenderi, it also uh, feeds on detritus in the benthic region. It also feeds on detritus in the benthic region. So these are typical examples of uh, benthic organisms that uh, feed on detritus. Like I said before, in the terrestrial ecosystem too, we have earthworms. You see earthworms, they feed on uh, dead leaves and other debris in the soil. They are detrital feeders. They are all, all organisms that feed on decomposing organic matter are called detritivores. They are called detritivores. The organisms that feed on decomposing organic matter that feed on detritus are called detritivores. Detritivores. So the earthworm is a detritivore. The mangrove crabs are detritivores. Then other benthic organisms like the starfish, the uh, sea cucumbers, and even the soul fish that feed on uh, organic decomposing organic matter in the bottom of the river or the ocean are all detritivores. So detritus, the decomposing organic matter, are very important sources of food. Now I want to discuss about the detrital food chain. The next subject we want to look at is the detrital food chain. The detrital food chain. That is a food chain that begins with detritus. We want to look at a food chain that begins with detritus. Like I said before, the detritus are a source of food. Now, um, <clears throat> like the grazing food chain that begins with uh, green plants. In the grazing food chain, we have uh, the, 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 major, the major source of energy we get is from the plants. The green plants manufacture their own food from sunlight, uh, with the aid of sunlight. And these green plants are being fed on by grazers, like the uh, grasshoppers or by uh, the uh, the goats, the cattle, the zebras, and many other grazers. And these ones are being fed on by carnivores, the, the secondary consumers, like the lion in the case of the uh, zebra. Uh, and many other animals. Then in the case of the goat, the goat can be fed on too by lion or other carnivores. Then these kind of secondary consumers are also in turn fed on by the tertiary consumers, which may even be humans who feed on these other carnivores or other ones that are, of, uh, that are stronger and have the 
propensity to feed on these other ones. So let us, before we discuss about the detrital food chain, let us understand what a food chain is. Now, a, a food chain, a food chain basically can be defined as a series of interconnected feeding relationships between organisms. A food chain is defined as a series of interconnected feeding relationships between organisms. A food chain can also be defined as a sequence of transferred matter and energy from one organism to the other in the form of food. So when energy is a sequence that transfers of transfers of matter and energy from one organism to the other in the form of food. Then we also have another definition. Uh, sorry, a food chain can also be def uh, a food chain consists of the producers, usually the green plants, the consumers, and the composers. These are the constituents of the food chain. As I've explained earlier, the producers are the green plants. The green plants are being fed on by lower animals like the, the grasshoppers. The grasshoppers are then fed on by other consumers. The grasshopper may be fed on by a bird and the bird may be fed on by humans or by other top predators. It could even be a lion or a dog or any other uh, organism that feeds on the birds. Then the and humans also uh, are part of such, such a food chain. All right, so like the grazing food chain, the detrital food chain, instead of beginning with uh, the plants, the detrital food chain begins with decomposed organic matter. That's the difference. The grazing food, we, so we have two types of food chains. We have two types of food chains now. We have the grazing food chain, the one you already know earlier. I believe you've been taught in ecology about food chain. So the grazing food chain uh, begins with green plants, photosynthetic organisms. It could be, uh, it can begin with algae, can begin with uh, phytoplanktons, particularly in the aquatic ecosystem. The phytoplanktons are being fed on by zooplanktons. The zooplanktons, are in turn, which are the primary consumers, are being fed on by larger organisms, secondary consumers, and even tertiary consumers. The zooplanktons are fed on by the fish. The fish, which are the secondary cons uh, consumers, are being fed on by humans or by birds. Okay. Uh, the same thing is applicable to the uh, grazing food chain that involves plants. The plants are being fed on by, by goats. The goats are being fed on by either humans, okay, when you have uh, the producers, primary consumers, and uh, tertiary consumers. Then you also, that's how it is with the detrital food chain. But the difference, the major difference is that the detrital food chain begins with detritus. That is the dead leaves that are already undergoing decomposition serve as the primary energy source. So we want to look at specific examples of detrital food chain. Okay, but before we look at that, we want to look at characteristics of the detrital food chain. What are the characteristics of the detrital food chain? The characteristics of detrital food chain. We have six characteristics of the detrital food chain. One of the characteristics of the detrital food chain is that the primary source is dead organic matter called detritus. That is the primary source of energy. Unlike in the grazing food chain that the primary source of energy is green plants uh, or the yeah, the, uh, the primary producers are the green plants, but in this case now, the uh, source of energy 
is the detritus, the decomposing organic matter. Then the primary consumers are detritivores. Now, the, in contrast to the grazing food chain, where the primary consumers are herbivores, herbivores in grazing food chain, but in detrital food chain, the primary consumers are what? Detritivores. The primary consumers are detritivores instead of uh, uh, herbivores. The detritivores are in turn eaten by secondary consumers. The detritivores in the grazing food chain are in turn eaten by the consumers. The food chain fixes inorganic matter. Then the fifth characteristic of the detritor food chain is that the detritus food chains are generally shorter than grazing food chains. The detritus food chains are generally shorter than grazing food chains. And then in nature, in nature, detrit detritus food chains are indispensable as the dead organic matter of the grazing food chain is acted upon by the decomposers to recycle the inorganic elements into the ecosystem. Now the where the grazing food chain ends, where the, uh, the detritus food chain starts from where the grazing food chain ends. When animals die, as they are undergoing decomposition, they, the decomposing animals, serve as a source of food to other animals. So the at the point where the uh, grazing food chain ends, that's where the detrital food chain starts. The detrital food chain starts from where the grazing food chain ends. When uh, these animals that have fed on the, uh, the herbivores, and the herbivores have been fed on by the secondary consumers, which are also, which are carnivores, and the tertiary consumers, and when these tertiary consumers die, and or even when they excrete, when they defecate, their feces, their feces, serve as a source of food for a detrital food chain. All right, we want to now look at uh, some examples of detrital food chains. Though I've mentioned them already, but we'll just quickly have, we'll just have a quick rundown of some examples of detrital food chain. First, we want to look at a detrital food chain that begins with leaf litter. We want to look at a detrital food chain that begins with leaf litter. The leaf litter is being fed on by the earthworms. Look at uh, the screen, you'll see a detrital food chain, typical detrital food chains. The, the leaf litter, that is the leaves of plants, when they fall in, when they fall and uh, they are already, either already decomposing or uh, they just fell from the plant. These um, leaves are being fed on by the earthworms. Lumbricus terrestris. Now the earthworm is in turn being fed on by a bird, it could be a blackbird. The blackbird, which is a smaller bird, is being fed on by a sparrowhawk, which is a bigger bird. You can have uh, a different, you can modify this food chain uh, to uh, it must not be exactly the way it is, but this is a typical example of a detrital food chain. The earthworms feed on the leaves. The, the earthworms are in turn being fed on by blackbird. The blackbird is then fed on by a sparrow hawk. The sparrow hawk can still be fed on by other top predators. Could be uh, even humans, okay? Now, this is another example of a detrital food chain. Okay, and please, ladies and gentlemen, we have 10 minutes to end uh, this 
Zoom app lasts for just uh, 40 minutes. So in the next 10 minutes, it may go, it will go off, but log on immediately. You can join the meeting immediately if it goes off. All right, so the other example, a dead animal is being fed on by blue flies, flies. It could be a matured fly or the maggot, the larva. Then the fly is being fed on by frog. The frog is in turn being fed on by a grass snake. That's another, a typical example of uh, a detrit another typical example of a detrital food chain. So like I said earlier, food chains, uh, detrital food chains begin with dead animals or parts of dead animals. It could even be the physics, the, the, the excretors, the cow dung is also a detritus. The cow dung is being can be fed on by flies. The flies are in turn being fed on by other organisms. Could be a frog, it could be a bird. Okay, so that's basically what a detritus food chain involves. In the mangrove ecosystem, uh, in the uh, estuarine ecosystem, in the estuary where you have mangroves. The principal energy flow of the detritus food chain follows the part you have the mangrove leaf detritus, which are being fed on by the bacteria, which decompose them. Then the detritus consumers, which are herbivores or omnivores, then lower carnivores and higher carnivores. Now here is uh, a typical uh, mangrove uh, food web. In the estuary, that an, an estuary basically is a tidally influenced ecological system where the river opens into the sea and salt water mixes with fresh water. Like if you go to areas like Kulama, uh, uh, Brass, Akasa, those areas that are close to the sea, the river that leads to the sea is called the estuary. And you see mangroves. Now, in that mangrove ecosystem, you, if you look at the left, if you look at the left-hand side of your slide, you see a mangrove tree. Now, this mangrove tree, this mangrove tree, uh, from time to time undergoes desiccate, uh, undergoes uh, defoliation. That is, the leaves eventually the leaves fall down, maybe as a result of wind or and uh, as a result of some other uh, uh, things that are responsible for defoliation. Now, when the leaf falls, the freshly uh, defoliated leaf uh, can be fed on by a crab. If you look at this, uh, this picture, you see that the leaf is being acted on by bacteria, algae, and fungi. And it is being fed on by the mangrove crab, a crab, just as I showed you earlier. The crab feeds on the leaves. It could either be a leaf that just fell, that's still green, or the one that is partially decomposed, or the one that's fully decomposed. These uh, detrital food uh, feeders, the crab feeds on the leaf, the decomposing leaf, and the crab can be either fed on by a heron, a bird, or by a fish. Now, if you look at the food chain, look at the crabs uh, from the leaf to the crab and then to the fish. This fish too can also be fed on by another bird. Okay, so that's a detrital food chain. Then another food chain you can see there is the leaf is being fed on by a prawn. The prawn is being fed on by a bird. Then you also have you can also have a food chain consisting of uh, the the leaf being fed on by either the crab or the snail. The snail can be eaten by the fish, and the fish being consumed by man. So these are various feeding relationships, and just as you can see there in the slide, the food chain begins with decomposing organic matter. That's the important point we want to take. It begins with decomposing 
organic matter. That's why it is called a detrital food chain. That is why it is referred to as a detrital food chain. A detrital food chain begins with dead and decomposing organic matter. It could be a dead animal, could be a dead plant or part of a dead plant. Any food chain that begins with a de dead animal or part of a dead animal or even the feces, the excreta, could be cow dung or our own feces. Uh -huh. It's called a detrital food chain. Any food chain that begins with dead parts, dead organic matter is said to be a detrital food chain. All right, so that's how far we can go in the explanation. Okay, we want to also look at uh, the differences quickly. We'll look at the differences between a detrital food chain and a grazing food chain. Differences between a detrital food chain and a grazing food chain. After, and uh, we have just uh, barely 30 minutes for this, uh, for the, uh, Zoom to end, but like, like I said, once it goes off, immediately join the meeting again. I'll uh, start the meeting immediately again. Now, differences between uh, grazing food chain and the tritos food chain. The first difference is that the grazing food chain begins with green plants at the first trophic level. The grazing food chain begins with green plants, while the detrital food chain begins with uh, detritus. The detrital food chain begins with detritus at the first trophic level. Trophic level means feeding level. Trophic level means feeding level. Feeding level. That's first trophic level basically means the produce at uh, the stage of the producer. Second trophic level is the primary consumer. Third trophic level, secondary consumer. Then fourth trophic level, tertiary consumer. Okay, the feeding level, either the producer or the consumer. Uh, that's basically what we refer to as the trophic level. Then the grazing in grazing food chain, energy for this food chain comes from the sun. The energy of the grazing food chain comes from the sun, but the energy for the detrital food chain comes from the remains of detritus. The energy for the detritus food chain comes from the remains of detritus, while that of the grazing food chain comes from the sun. Then lastly, the food chain adds energy into the ecosystem. The grazing food chain, the grazing food chain adds energy into the ecosystem while the detrital food chain takes up energy from the detritus, ensuring maximum utilization and minimum wastage. That's the energy is taken from the detritus. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we I will now end the meeting and start it again because we have less than less than uh, we have less than one minute left so i'll end the meet, meeting and start it again and so you will quickly join then in our next session we'll look at classification and characteristics of soil we'll look at classification and characteristics of soil like i said the meeting will end in less than a minute's time and when we begin again We'll look at classification and characteristics of soil.